Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here with my review for the TMNT The Last Ronin Finale Issue. Really loved it. Of course, this will be full on spoilers, so it's not like a normally my movie reviews I do spoilers in the second half. We're just going right into it. But um, if you are just checking out my reviews as far as this being the first one, as you can see, I have all the other issues here. I did reviews on every single one of those issues. I also have a different nerdy Ninja Turtle shirt for every single review. I had to actually look at my old reviews because I was like, I know there's one that I didn't wear. It's my Technodrome. So let's kick shell. Oh, uh, there's obviously a Nelson time reference there for anyone who doesn't remember that one. But getting into the issue, it was fantastic. It was bittersweet for sure, but it was really fun. Like, I, I think I said it, or I had to have said it in one of my other reviews, but I really hope they make this into like, at least just a movie. It doesn't have to be like a full series or anything. I, I think it's just enough where you could just make a cool hour, hour, you know, hour and a half long movie and it would be just fine. It would be perfect. It doesn't have to be a whole series or anything. It could just be this. Give us a movie, animate it. It would be perfect. I, I really think that it would lend well to animation. And this issue, it was like, oh man, I, I just, I wanted to see it animated so bad because I'm like, you know, he's got like, you have a turtle going up against, not just like a Shredder, like that's always a big deal. He's going up against a Terminator Shredder. He's got like <clears throat> T-1000, <clears throat> excuse me, so like T-1000 armor on and stuff. And it's like, this is super cool. Like, it's really cool. I like the look of the suit as well, where it's like, it was white with the red. He also had like the face mask where he could like close in and actually cover his face or stay open. But the whole issue was just like hit after hit after hit. And it was actually a lot like the first issue, which in fact, they show, cause yeah, I have the regular cover. They actually have it when he, when Mikey's like first going to the tower, it's him from the first issue, which I have to find in here. But Oh, like ah, oh, just look at that. Look at that. That's crazy. Which we'll get to this part because, mm, considering how the story ends, I'm like, nah, she's not dead. She's there's no way. I just don't believe it based on how they did that. And then it's like it ends with the to be continued. There's no way that there's not a shredder or that lineage isn't there to combat against the turtles in some way, shape, or form. I just I find it very hard to believe because I was like, oh, that's a crazy ending for Karai to not really have any importance to the story at all. And she was, I mean, I, that's not necessarily true, obviously, based on what happened with Raph. But it's like, that, that's really interesting. And then she's just like, I always hated my mom. Boom, she's gone. I'm like, that's interesting. And then, of course, like I said, especially when it ended like with a to be continued, technically in the epilogue, it ends with a to be continued. And I was like, nah. Even before that, before I even got to the end, I was like, there's no way. This is definitely, like, I could just tell just as soon as that happened, I was like, this is going to keep going. Like, I, like that, in that moment, I was like, there's no way that she was there that whole time. And then just never meant anything. I don't believe it. But here it is. Boom. That's just him. It's him straight from the first cover. I love that. I thought that was such a cool reference that they just threw it in there. And it was like, it's literally just him from the first cover. Just thrown right there. And he's going in for the final battle. And it was amazing. It was an amazing final battle. Um, it was a lot like the first issue. That's I think it is very interesting. Like the way they bookended the series is the first issue was 100%. Mikey was like, I'm going here. I might die. I probably will, but whatever. Like, this is the mission. I'm going to kill this man and just end all of this. And it doesn't work, and then you you actually have the story built from there. And then the final issue comes. It's like, we've already settled all our differences. We've gone through the backstory of losing um, the rest of the Turtles, losing Casey, losing um, Master Splinter, seemingly uh, losing April, of course, he, he thought for a while. And then you just have this final issue. And it's just balls to the wall action. It's like the whole city is under, you know, it's absolute chaos. Stockman is gone. They took him out. The Fugitoid is gone. Everything is just crazy. The whole effing city is going buck wild. People are like, oh, we aren't, we, we aren't being controlled. Let's go crazy. Like they didn't, <laughs> it, it wasn't civilized at all. It wasn't just like, oh, the tyranny is stopped. Yeah, the tyranny is stopped. Let's tip these cars over. It's, it's like that classic joke where it's like, yeah, there's no more crime. Woo. And then they start flipping cars and setting stuff on fire. <laughs> and it's like, that's exactly what happened. So it was really funny, but it was just like, it's super crazy and chaotic. And it's like, dude, we didn't know we'd have to like, you know, control like the normal hordes of people. Like we're trying to like take out the bad guy here. And so, you know, Casey Marie is going around. She has to deal with a bunch of issues. Then it's like the sewer's flooding. Like, well, I got to go down there. I got to figure out like, where's my mom at? What's happening, you know, with April? So they're like cutting back and forth through the story between her and Mikey. And, you know, he's looking at Master Slinger's book. He writes something down. He takes off. He goes on his final mission. This is it. And I love the way that they handle how the fight actually went because it starts off he's of course climbing the tower classic video game style 
takes out all the foot ninjas and is like, these guys are weak. Like, they've lived so much, you know, in comfort where it's like, oh, they've sent a bunch of robots out to do everything. They haven't trained. They're, you know, they're not as trained as the people that I used to fight in the past who were actually humans who had to do this stuff underneath Shredder. These are, like, the people, like, just in the building. And so he's, like, wiping through all of them. Like, that, uh, that's another part that I would love to see animated because in that it's like, okay, they're building up, you know, it's panel after panel of just people he decimated. But it's building up to him fighting the dude with the giant sword, which I guess was a human, but it was weird. And I was like, I, I almost wanted that to last a little longer just because I was like that, you know, once again, go on video game mode. That was like the first, <laughs> that was the first mini boss, but he beats him. And then he has to go up against um, a giant bird, which was referenced. I think it was actually like two issues ago where um, I can never remember the villains. I always want to say Hiroto, but that is, I don't remember this idiot's name. Which I kind of don't care because he was the bad guy and he was a douchebag. But I should know his name. But either way, the bad guy. I'm going to try to see if I can randomly find it in here as I'm going through this. Um, he was saved, you know, falling from his building at some point, And then like, we just see giant bird claws. And so we actually finally see that that is a giant robot. And Mikey has to take it out. He takes quite a few hits from it. But ultimately, he uses the sword from the last battle. Takes the thing down. He also goes up against, the, you know, well, I can't really say he goes up against the crows, but he realizes the crows are robots. Um, I think it was before both fights. And boom, hits the Tonfas and it sets off an EMP, which I thought was super sick. I love that. And I think that was in the first issue as well. Um, but I love that. I thought that was such a cool move. And so, you know, he goes through the, the boss fights and stuff, you know, the mini boss and whatnot. And then he gets to the new Shredder and he's fighting and it's liquid metal. They're fighting in the building. The building blows up. They're fighting down the building. They land in a, um, a water tank, which is the only reason Mikey was probably even alive. But that is also what led him to see like, oh, if he does take enough damage at one second, boom, I have a, a slight opening. So he starts going with all the different weapons. And then he goes through the weapons of his brothers and he uses the Psy, he uses the bow staff, he uses the katana. And it was so cool. And he's like, you know, sends his regards from, you know, his brothers and stuff. And I was like, that's amazing. And then we get to the end and he's jumping through. I know I've, I didn't find the dude's name, but at this point, it don't matter because we're at like probably one of the coolest points in this entire effing comic. And it's this right here. It is Michelangelo with his weapon. Man, it seemed like he was basically just at like a hundred percent because it was like he went through he was doing his thing and it's like i'm trying to fight and survive he got tree he got tricked or it was like nah you know it's like i yield it's like nah we're not doing that buddy but he took too long <laughs> with the manhole cover and he got stabbed and so it was like dang fell for the oldest trick in the book i was too cocky but when he got to the sewers and he was like okay used up you know raf's weapon used up leo's weapon used up donnie's weapon it's my time and he came out and he was looking sick especially like it's cool to see him use his weapons in like the jet black as well. Like something about it is like when it's not, you know, it, it, it's not Mikey, you know, in orange and stuff. Like when the turtles are in like full on ninja mode or in this case, Lash Ronin mode, it's different. It has a different style to it where it's like, you know, it's Mikey using his nunchucks and he, you know, he, typically he's jumping like, yeah, and he's getting into a fight and he's having fun. This was like, nah, I'm, I'm killing this dude. Like it, it's game over. Like this dude is about to go. And, you know, he's like, yeah, who's running? Who's hiding? And he's just, he literally just hits him in the top of the head and <laughs> knocks, like, the three points off of his skull. And it's like, he's just whooping this dude up. And the, I think the only thing that kind of made the even playing field again was the fact that uh, Casey and April ended up, like, getting the water out of the sewer. That's, like, the only thing. Because I think Mikey was about to end that whole battle right there. Like, he was whooping him up. And then, of course, it gets down to the end. And ultimately, he does end up surviving beyond his opponent and... That's just how it went out. Like, he, I mean, it seemed like he twisted something in his heart. I mean, he's just, like, it's crazy. And he blows up, and then, of course, Mikey crawls out, and he's he's alive, and is like, some god. And it's good. And sadly, he does die after that, and, of course, he tells Casey Marie to read the final thing, and it says, to no peace. And April shows up, and is like, goodbye, my sweet friend. And it's just like, that sucks. It was so sad, and it was just like, oh, man, I... Mikey's got, I was hoping that he'd get to, like, live, and then, of course, you know, my hope was that, despite everything that the issue seemed to lead up to, he would actually be able to live, because he'd be able to live after the torture he went through, and I, I felt like that would have been, it would have been a nicer ending, of course, but in this case, it was, it was just a, a tragic ending, where it was like, ultimately, he did do something good, he did something great, even, like, if it weren't for him, no one else could have could have stopped the shredder like as usual but like it's the turtles it's or splinter you know <laughs> depending on where you're at in the series um but you know like people can't just stop the shredder it doesn't matter if it's the original shredder or if it's you know his grandson technically 
It's like no one can really do it. It it comes down to the turtles. It's those two bloodlines. They have to just they have to clash. One has to end the other for it to stop. And they both end. Like the the battle is over, seemingly, of course. Um, but it was a it was a great bittersweet way to end things out. And he does end up passing on, and you know, he just no peace. It's like his final thing. And so it's like you know that's the end. And then it's like oh there's there's quite a few more pages. You know there's some more pages after the end. And I love what they did. I mean it, you know it. Cause, you know, it's, well, I would have to assume it's maybe a couple of months. Also, the, all of this is, you know, like that, that just hits you right there. It's like he wakes up and it's like he's dreaming, but, you know, he's in heaven and he's with Master Splinter and he's with Casey and he's got his brothers next to him. And it's like, yeah, that looks good. And, and it's, it's just really like everything's like sunny and bright and they're just having fun. And it's just like, it hits you. It hits for real. But then we go into the epilogue. And Casey Marie's training, and she's talking with her mom about the experiments, and then it's like, yo, what are we gonna eat? And it's like, I wasn't talking to you, mom. She's talking to four new little turtles. They got the TCRI canister, and they're making four new turtles. And it's just, boom, to be continued. Totally forgot about that being on. But it's to be continued. I I'm excited. I'm gonna turn that down. I don't make another message. But either way, I'm excited for whatever comes next. I just realized this is silent. I didn't really plan on having that show anyway, I forgot. But I'm excited for whatever they do next. Um, it's just interesting. It's very interesting to see where they could go with this. I mean, at this point, I would imagine if they continue, the big question is, do they continue with Casey and April as they are now? And we see their story as the turtles grow up? Or do they do a time skip? That's the big question because at some point... Um, you know, April would be super old. It, you know, just naturally time does that. So the big question now is like, what do they do going forward with the series? I mean, I, I'm curious what they would even call it because obviously it won't be the last run. It'll just be with in the universe. Um, so it's it, it's just very interesting. Like, where does this story go from here? You know, like, do we get to see, at some point, do we get to see flashbacks of older stories? Would it be relevant anymore? Like with the turtles being gone in this universe, would it be relevant for us to have flashbacks within the last run of universe? Are there characters that they would bring back that, you know, I mean, we didn't see any Triceratons or anything like that. So there, there's a million other characters that could technically still be alive in the last run of universe that we just don't see. Maybe they either left New York or they were in, you know, I will just say they left New York because at this point, if they were in hiding, they would have come out during this moment to be like, oh, everyone's rallying against, you know, the Shredder and, you know, the Foot Clan. So... It'll be interesting to see how they handle this, what new... They would have to make new villains, of course. Like, even if they brought old people back, there's only so many characters you could bring back that would be, like, a huge... Obviously, you have, like, a full army of space triceratops. That's very different. That that could literally just last for an eternity. It would just be another generation of them. Uh, so it wouldn't have to be specific characters from that uh, species. But it would have to be, for the most part, new villains, uh, new ally characters as well. So there's, you know, there's so much there. I mean, obviously, with everything that they have done in the Ninja Turtles comics in the past and currently in the present with what they're doing with storylines. There's just so much potential. And then you have like a brand new, in a sense, a brand new universe of the TMNT. And it's it's just so interesting. And they won't, I, I mean, I would assume they, not, they aren't going to actually name them after the Turtles. They still could though. But I mean, that's a big question. I would love to know from you guys, like, do you think they'll give them completely different names or will it be like in honor of, you know, the family that we had? You know, obviously Mikey would be you know, given the name of, you know, his name would be given to one of the younger turtles. It, it's just so interesting. Would they have the same weapons? Would they teach them the same weapons? Like, th there's a million questions in it because it's like, obviously their personalities can't be the same because then it's just, it's, it's just the TMNT. Um, so they would grow up differently. They would be different characters. They would have potentially different names or they could give them the same names with different personalities that i think would make it a little weird because we'd be like they'd have the same names but then it would just feel like they just swap personalities with the names so it's like i feel like at that point they should just give them completely different names but then it's like i, I don't know what you know would you bother going with other artists or maybe musicians you know there's so many things that you know you always go with like the um the artist route because that's you know that's their names but then it's like do you do that again do you just pick different artists do you do musicians like i said you know different stuff just give them random names that are just cool so there's a lot of questions there what's going to happen in the future what is is there going to be a time skip are they going to do something with that are they going to just start from the be you know the beginning of where the epilogue is and it's like it's casey and april's story as they kind of train the turtles um 
and just kind of we see the world build up maybe they'll do that in the first issue and we'll kind of get like little chunks of time uh and maybe they'll kind of by the end they'll be teenagers you know they'll be the tmnt the new uh new era of the tmnt again so there's a lot of questions i i'm very excited i i loved the series itself it was just like you know what's going to happen who's the final turtle was the big mystery leading up to it um how did all the other turtles pass away how did master splinter pass away how did casey pass away so tons of questions there you know casey marie obviously having mutant abilities and stuff like that like we don't really see her get to utilize that too much or really if you think about it we don't really see her get to utilize it at all in the story like you know the, her whole thing is that she's been in fights and stuff like that but we haven't truly seen it we like in this series we don't really see i mean honestly the biggest thing was her getting angry in this issue and talking to her mom about it after she punches through a, a wall and it's like you'll hurt yourself it's like will i hurt myself though and that i think is the biggest we've truly gotten with her like that was the first time they actually even talk about it so it's definitely the first time we have like a true um explanation of her powers like the first other time was when she was training with mike and he's like huh like you know oh something you know something's a little different here so other than those two moments we don't we haven't gotten her true like mutant abilities like her super strength and healing and all that stuff we haven't seen her truly utilize that as an actual fighter we don't we barely have her as this you know like totally looking like a cross between robin and spoiler from dc um but i, I would love to see it i would love to see her be the leader like her and april would be like the joint leaders like she's the training leader and then april would of course have the uh, master splinter role because she's been with the turtles she knows kind of just the more human side of things and it's maybe not so much the fighting but they could both kind of be uh leaders together and, and that'll be an interesting dynamic as well they would both have to train these four you know young turtles to be martial arts masters and to be decent in a i'll just say decent human beings even though decent mutant uh turtles <laughs> but I, I like the idea of it. I, I'm very excited for where it's headed. I love this final issue. It was a lot, like I said, it was a lot like the first one where it was just like, this is the mission and that's exactly what I'm doing. He did it at the very beginning and he, he actually concluded it at the end. Unfortunately, Mikey did actually die, even though that's another part that makes it really bittersweet because the whole time he wasn't like, man, I hope I live. I hope I don't die. I hope I can kill this dude and then kind of get out of here and be with uh, Casey and April. It was just like, no, nah, this is my destiny. This is like my bloodline has led me here and this is fate. I will kill that bloodline. And if my bloodline ends, it doesn't matter as long as my destiny is concluded. And it was just like, it's hard to, it makes it easier because in a weird sense, he found peace through that. Like as harsh as it is, it was almost like that was him knowing peace. And then like the weirdest way, everything that he'd suffered and gone through and then like the, the small good moments of realizing April's been alive this whole time and then finding out he, you know, in a sense, he basically has a niece. He has Casey Marie. And so it's it was really interesting like going through the story and him being so calm about like, this is what I have to do. I'm probably gonna die, but you know, I'm gonna kill him and that's all that matters. And that's what happened and it's just like, it's okay for him at least and so i was like that was another part that makes it bittersweet because it's not as sad because you know that he was he i mean he was okay with it literally from the first issue that was like the whole thing was like i'm going in here to kill this dude and that's it and he just happened to not succeed and he was like dang i failed and he was pissed about it but it was mikey doing his thing and you know of course in the beginning of the issue is when he officially comes to terms with like i don't need my brothers here anymore i'm ready to just be done and that's kind of how he, they really show that off. It's like, just be quiet and leave me alone. And it's like, okay, my brothers are gone. I'm going out to get him. I'm doing what needs to be done for my family, my lineage, my destiny, all of that. It's here right now. And it does not matter if I die. And he does it. And he does it. And unfortunately, he does die at the end. But he did what he set out to do. And it's like, it still sucks to see him go. But of course, you know, the very end, you know, he wakes up, basically, we'll say in heaven. And he's with his family, or, you know, most of them at least. And it was good. And it was just like, man, it's sad. But at the same time, he was ready to go. So it makes makes it more at peace for me to be like, okay, we lost him. But he was ready literally from issue one. But we uh, we never wanted him to die. Everyone else is already gone. We don't want to see the last turtle die. But he was ready to go. And I think it was a, a cool way how they did it with the two issues being almost identical, you know, from the first to the last, or the first and the last, I should say, where his whole thing was just, I'm ready to do it. And then it's like, by the time you get to the end, it's like, okay i i guess i'm ready if he doesn't make it i have to be ready like he is and i, I like that i like you know some things that make you think where it's like you don't want you know obviously the whole point of the story is like this is sad i don't want any of the turtles i don't want master Splinter to be dead i don't want casey to be dead but that's the whole point of the story going into it is that sort of like release of just being like this sucks but at the same time 
you, you keep moving forward. So I like the way they handled it. I loved everything about this. I hope we get a movie in some way, shape, or form. We need to have a movie of this because it's always the best. It's always the saddest, but it's always the best when they do like the apocalyptic stuff. Um, the only time I didn't like it was the 2012 TMNT. And that was only because that was the canonical ending to that series. And I hated that. I was so pissed that they made like the canonical ending that they lost and like ev everyone on earth died and like turned into mutants. And that made me really sad, but not in a fun way like this did where it was like, oh, that's tragic. But things worked out. That was just like effing devastating. Whereas like they just lost a battle and then 20 years later, everybody's just dead. Earth is just destroyed basically. And I was like, I hate this as the ending. It was so sad to me. I was like, this was not fun. But other than that, you know, we had like TMNT, you know, the 2003 series where they went into the future. Unfortunately, that wasn't the canonical ending. That was just a future episode, which if I'm not mistaken, was also Mikey. Uh, I may have mentioned that before in one of the other reviews, but it's always Mikey. It's always Mikey being the happy one who goes into the future alone. And it's like, that's how you get the most introspection, where he's like the character who was always happy-go-lucky about it, like, ah, everything will be fine. And then it's the worst outcome. And he has to work through that. And he, he changes so much compared to any, how anyone else would. But love this series. Would love to know your thoughts on it. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. Let me know your favorite parts about it, least favorite parts about it. Um, going forward, what would you like to see? What do you think we're going to see? Um, what are they going to do? I mean, we're in a new... In a new universe, we're going to have new turtles. They're going to go forward, I would have to assume. And it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I don't know where you go from here. It's it's so different because it's not just like it's the TMNT, but it's starting over again. It's another reboot of the turtles. It's different turtles. Even if they give them the same names, like I said, they can't have the same personalities. They're different. So it'll be interesting. And, you know, who would be the leader? You know, I, once again, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't matter if they don't have the same names. Um but maybe like one of them would be Michelangelo and then the other three would have totally different names. That would, that would be interesting, an interesting way to do that where it's like, you know, Casey Marie names one of them Michelangelo solely based on the fact that that's the turtle she knew, but then the other three uh, actually get different names. And that would just be fun. It would be fun to see. But either way, I'm looking forward to whatever they do, whatever colors they give them, whatever weapons they give them. I hope it's different. Weapons. That's like my main thing. I would love to see them use different weapons um, or just weapon, weapons we don't see as often. Um, I don't read a lot of the TMNT comics. I'm, I'm going to get the IDW collection fairly soon. Um, so I don't know if Raph actually uses the Tonfa currently or if he's sticking with the Psy. I think he has the Psy in those. But I know he uses Tonfa a bunch. Rise of the TMNT, they gave him the Tonfa. And it was like, oh, that's actually really cool. Because um, that, that was something he did a lot. But of course, everyone knows him for using the Psy. But I would love it. You know, different weapons. If one turtle just used Tonfa all the time. You know, once again, Raph did that for a long time. But... You never really see that anymore. Um, or you could. I Like I said, I don't read the comics. I'm not caught up. But Tonfa would be great. Um, I don't know what other weapons I could really think of. Maybe if one of the turtles did like one katana instead of, you know, two. You know, two. Uh, wakaz well, I guess they were te technically still katana. They weren't wakazashi. They were still katana. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what weapons they could use. They could do... A spear would be interesting. They technically had that in the 2012 show as well. Like, they all have, like, blades that just popped out of sticks. And I'm like, that does not work for a nunchuck. But it looks sick as F, and I don't mind it. And, you know, the blade popping out of both staff makes sense. But it was just like, that doesn't really work. But it works. It, it's totally fine. It looks sick. So I don't know what they're going to do. But either way, I'm excited. More Turtles. What a time to be a Turtles fan. We got the Kawabunga Collection coming out. Shredder's Revenge. I cannot wait for that game. And if you didn't know, they recently announced that they're bringing back the 80s uh, voice actors to do the voices for the characters, which is insane. I don't know what they're going to do, of course. Um, unfortunately, James Avery, who was, uh, most people know him as Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince, he unfortunately passed away. So they couldn't get him back to do Shredder. But if they use like voice clips and stuff, that would be really cool. I would love it if they did that. I mean, I think that would work too, especially considering he did the voice for so long in the show. They'd have more than enough just for the game because it's not like they're going to be like having a million conversations it'll be short they can use clips for sure and I, I think it'll be just fine but we'd love to see what they do with that um i hope they use voice clips i think that would just be a great way to honor him and he's, he has a really epic voice um but it'll be cool uh, you know shredder's revenge is coming out kyle Bonga collection coming out final issue of the last ronin and a future in the last ronin universe it's a great time to be a turtles fan it always is but Mm, we're getting some good new stuff this year and i love it so like i said please put your comments down in the comment section below and of course thanks for watching